Hi, David Dalton with the Indiana Department of Transportation. I am joined this afternoon by Joe McGinnis. He is NDOT's commissioner. So uh, thank you so much for taking time to speak with me today, Joe. Absolutely, David. I appreciate the opportunity. Well, I uh, thought we could just get started. I was wondering if you could share just a little bit about your career journey, kind of, you know, where you started and, and to where you are now today with our agency. Yeah, so it's been kind of uh, interesting. Um, so I'm 42 years old. Uh, I recently turned 42 a couple of weeks ago. And happy and, birthday! Uh, thank you. Um, and you know, my career really, you know, I had typical college student type jobs all the way through college, and then uh, upon graduation, um, I really thought my intent was going to be I was going to be a police officer. It's kind mm -hmm. of the house that I grew up in, and um, thought that was the path that I was going to take. And so the first job right out of college was was to be a, a probation officer. And so I worked with juveniles to start, and then I moved over to adult. I uh, actually did that for eight years, um, but but learned a few years into it that I'm not sure that this is the career path I really mm -hmm. truly want to pursue. Uh, and so maybe I'll go back to taking some some classes at night, continue on with work, uh, but then take some night classes. And so I did that. And so I attended Indiana Wesleyan and, and, uh, and earned a, a master's degree after about two and a half or three years. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then went to the private sector. And so worked for uh, a private company in Greenwood, um, got to know working with cities and towns and counties on mm -hmm. financing. And so got familiar with that. And it was an interest to me. Um, and so had the harebrained idea that, hey, I think I'm going to run for mayor. <laughs> uh, so in 2011, um, ran for mayor of city, uh, the city of Franklin. Uh, here in Indiana and uh, and won and, and served in that capacity through one full term, uh, ran for re-election, won, and it was finishing at my first year of the second term and got a call from, at the time, he was Lieutenant Governor slash Governor-elect Eric Holcomb. Mm -hmm. um, and I had the privilege of meeting him, you know, a few years prior uh, and gotten to know him over the last few years and, and uh asked to serve in this in this capacity as uh, NDOT commissioner. So I've uh, been honored and blessed and been in this role since January of 2017. Wow. Uh, so I imagine a lot's happened since then. Um, yeah. <laughs> needless to say. Uh, I, so in your, in your role today, could you describe some of the responsibilities that you have as commissioner of the Department of Transportation? Yeah, uh, you know, for almost, for a little over three years, my my role, and I, I say that because of I'll get, there's a, there's been a break that we all know about in the last <laughs> few months. But you know, the first three years was um, you know a lot of the day to day were uh, involved a lot of meetings, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes internal, uh, oftentimes though they were with uh, outside consultants, contractors, those kind of things. Um, and you know, this, this it's a it's a large agency, and from 3,600 employees to a two point five to two point eight billion dollar budget there's a lot going on and so um, oftentimes I'm outside of the building and mm -hmm. in meeting and in speaking to groups and talk about what we're doing uh, and then just then you just got to trust the people that are around you to make you know the, the proper day-to-day -day business decisions uh, and every day is different that's the beauty of this of yeah. these type of positions is you know I, I come in every morning and and Jenny does an amazing job of putting together the calendar and the in the you know the agenda for the day um, but it, it's, you know, two or three days a week, uh, a couple hours into the day, things change. Yeah. Something happens and something goes in a different direction. Um, since COVID, you know, COVID hit and you heard me say a lot of the things I do were external. Mm -hmm. Those things have to stop. Uh, those face-to-face -face meetings, the, the larger, you know, chamber of commerce type luncheons and those mm -hmm. kind of things, they don't exist. Um, starting to come back around now, but you know, for, for a few months they haven't really existed. And so, um, we kind of shifted into logistics. And so that's the beauty of NDOT is that it's not just fixing roads and bridges. Mm -hmm. you know, we immediately, the second, third week of March, when the state started receiving some of the federal stockpile of uh, PPE masks and, mm -hmm. and the gowns and things, more for the medical professionals, we immediately moved into logistics mode. And mm -hmm. so we were the support system to the State Department of Health to move those to all 92 counties. And we still continue that today. Uh, and so being able to work with our team and, and completely shift from fixing roads and bridges to providing support to doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals around the state uh, was really cool to be a part of and, and to experience. 
and to really see our team gel with Indiana State Police, the National Guard, uh, Homeland Security, State Department of Health, and the list goes on. And um, it was really, really kind of cool to, to see all that uh, transpire. And um, it's been a lot of, it's, it's been an, an, as much as you can enjoy this pandemic, that's, that's, that there has been some joy just in being able to experience that. Yeah, that's, you know, I, kind of talking about the, the high level of collaboration that we've had to have, you know, and to be able to pivot like that. We talked a little bit about that earlier, um, you know, how, how we've been able to do it. I, I guess just to kind of springboard off of that, what would you say one of the largest successes has been from our ability to adapt and to, to deal with this pandemic in the way that we have? Yeah, you know, I think we're shifting um, rapidly, uh, probably more rapid than than the rest of uh, NDOT or myself would, would want to do at this point. But, you know, we're rapidly uh, transitioning to what many, even those in the private sector are doing. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we've learned through all of this is while everyone has been working from home, um, we have actually been more efficient and more productive while folks are at home. And so we have a large number of key performance indicators and metrics that we monitor mm -hmm. uh, pre-COVID and obviously during COVID, and we will continue to do those things post-COVID. Uh, but we are noticing, you know, for example, uh, you know, purchase orders that are sitting through contracts that we're, we're paying the vendors and the contractors are doing the work. You know, typically we were processing those in about an 11-day period. We're down to like eight days now uh, wow. since we've been at home. And so our productivity and our efficiency has increased. And so I think businesses, large, small, private, public, uh, are going to be reevaluating and, and assessing, do we need to have everyone here in this building, whether mm -hmm. it's Salesforce or it's NDOT, uh, do we, do, you know, where are we at? How are we going to adapt? Uh, so it's going to be an ever evolving thing. And it's, and, um, you know, it's challenging, don't get me wrong, but it's, but it's sure. a, it's a, it's an interesting challenge because, you know, as we're looking to the future of NDOT or pick another state agency for that matter, we also know that we need to adapt. It's not always mm -hmm. going to be the generation of let's sit behind a desk, uh, let's let's crank out a bunch of designs on bridges and right. uh, all of these kind of things. Um, we've got to adapt, and the you know it's a benefit to be able to to be able to telework uh, or even potentially part part time telework mm -hmm. or remote work, uh, working from split home and and being in the office. Uh, so we're adapting to that, and and uh, we'll make the most of it. Well, thank you. I just I wanted to kind of chat about that, and I I guess we can we can kind of go back a little bit. And you know, you talked about what what how your here today your day to day has changed. But when you were in high school, you you talked about you know what you thought you would do, and I was yeah. wondering if you could kind of share a little bit more about you know what you thought your career would look like and how it changed over time. Yeah, so I, I really um, had envisioned uh, that I was going to go to this one particular state college, state university. Um, I was going to pr pursue, you know, criminal justice, law enforcement type background, um, and you know what, living most of the time with my mother and my my stepfather. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a police officer, and my mother was a court reporter, and so that was kind of the world that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was when I was staying with my mom, and so I thought that was where I was that was the path I was going to go, um, and so I ended up at Franklin College, and because uh, I wanted to continue to play athletics at mm -hmm. the collegiate level, and so I had the opportunity to do it, so I, I pursued it. Uh, they had a sociology and criminal justice program, and so I I jumped into that, um, and you know upon graduation, it, it's going into the law enforcement is not just, you just don't go in on day one, you've kind of mm -hmm. got to work your way into it. And so I knew that, you know, being a probation officer was going to be a great opportunity to get that door open. Uh, so all the way through high school, I really thought, man, I'm just going to come out and be a police officer yeah. and get to college and you realize it's not that simple. Um, and so I've got to find this other career path. Uh, and that's what led me on, it led me into uh, being a probation officer in Johnson County for eight years. It's kind of interesting because I, you know, I've, I've had a few of these conversations and it's almost equally important to find out what it is that you don't want to do as opposed mm -hmm. to what you do want to do. And I think that might have played a, a role in kind of your decision after experiencing something like that. Yeah. And, you know, we're going through this right now with, with my own, our, our kids, uh, mm -hmm. my wife and I, we have a, a son that's uh, going to be here in a couple of days. We'll be a junior in high school and my daughter's in eighth grade, going into eighth grade. Uh, and we're doing the college visit thing right now. Mm -hmm. We're trying to, you know, what are, what are your passions? 
Um, and it's a challenge when you're a junior in high school, you're 50, 16 years old, and what do you want to do when you grow up? Well, I can tell you right now, I'm 42, and people ask, well, what's next after NDOT? And I say, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do when I grow up. Um, and so, you know, asking a 16-year-old or 17 or 18-year-old to determine their future based off of their college choice um, or their technical vocational choice mm-hmm. um, is, is tough. And so when I went into probation, it took me a period of time, but I realized after four or five years of being in that role, I'm not sure that I really want to pursue this, right. whether it's police work or probation. I'm not sure that this is the career path I want, but with my sociology criminal justice degree, I felt my exposure to potential employers may be pigeonholed because I was strictly criminal justice. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went, I, I, a mentor of mine who's actually my wife's uncle, uh, who's a successful business owner uh, since retired, but challenged me. And he said, prove to me that you have the ability to get into business, go back to school. And so I continue to work as a probation officer, but I worked at night um, mm-hmm. on my master's degree and um, earned that after, you know, like I said earlier, two and a half, three years and, and, and earned that. And so it's just a challenge with high schoolers uh, to, to do this um, because I'm going through it right now. Mm-hmm. And in a couple of years with my daughter, I'll be doing it the exact same thing again. If you, if you could go back and talk to your former self, your high school self, yeah. what advice would you give yourself? Uh, the, you know, school, high school normally usually starts, you know, seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning and rolls until about eight, at 3 or 3.30 in the afternoon. Take that period of time out of your day a little bit more seriously. Um, I did not. And, um, and, I, and I struggled with it when I, when mm-hmm. I did go on to college. Um, you know, the abilities, you know, the key things right now are, you know, your ability to be able to communicate, mm-hmm. writing, um, reading, or just um, verbally uh, communicating your ideas or, or um, your, your comments um, is, is critical. And, you know, I, high school for me was, was a fun time and, and, uh, and it still can be. You mm-hmm. just, I, I wish I would have buckled down a little bit more and sure. that 7.30 to 3.30 or 8.3, whatever those time periods were, a little bit more. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, that's, that's good advice. Um, it's good to balance it out for sure. Yeah. Um, um, so kind of, you kind of maybe talked, touched on this just now, but what would be a skill set that you have to have kind of, you know, yeah. in, in just throughout your career, maybe one or two that have stood out and, and that you are using now? Communication um, is critical and being able to articulate um, your position, mm-hmm. uh, your opinion, or what you believe is, is the path that should be going. And, and whether, it's, whether it's speaking to a group of a thousand people, um, which I've had the opportunity to do, um, or, or to be able to communicate. Just yesterday, I was in South Bend. Um, and we were on a job site and I'm, I'm rocking the hard hat and the PPE, the reflective mm-hmm. vests and everything. And I'm just observing. Um, and it was NDOT people on the job, uh, you know, they're, they're re, basically redoing an entire highway, concrete, mm-hmm. bridge repair. And so watching the N, NDOT folks that are on the ground and the contractor and, and you have these men and women that are, you know, they're, they're not only there holding the tools and operating the, you know, the front end loaders and the skid steers and all these other things, um, but they have to be able to communicate. Yeah. They have to know what, what that person just said is important to me, whether it's safety or it's getting the job done accurately, because whether it's your own safety while you're on the job or it's the safety of the motorist that's going to drive over that bridge when it's opened up is extremely important. And so being able to look at those plans understand what those plans mean and then be able to communicate that to whether it's uh, your equal or someone else that you supervise or maybe even to your supervisor uh, is is extremely important. So communication is absolutely critical Um, and and it's going to be a challenge with, Mm -hmm. like I said, I'm dealing with it with a, you know, a teenage boy and girl that uh, believe that everything is communicated through social media and Snapchat on their phone. Um, that's not accurate. When you get out on the job, it's extremely important for the safety of everyone on the job. I don't care what you're doing, whether you're in the office or you're on the actual in the field. Mm-hmm. Extremely important that you have to be able to communicate and understand what each other are saying. 
yeah i i yeah communication um you know i think that that transcends every profession you know it's right. just a it's a life skill at this point in time uh so you know um only a couple more questions left but i, I was wondering you know what what do you consider to be one of the most rewarding aspects about working for our agency and and uh and maybe even um now as part of the highway industry yeah so i will you know one thing i say about ndot um and i would i challenge that other state agencies i don't know that they can say this that we are the one state agency that every hoosier touches every single day um, I don't care if you are five years old and mom or dad are taking you to school or mm -hmm. to grandma's house, or you're trying to get to work or you're trying to get to school, um, soccer practice, uh, professional sports event, uh, trying to get to a concert, doesn't matter. Uh, you touch something that NDOT has had a part of, whether that's an interstate, a state highway, or even your local roads, Main Street, mm -hmm. Indiana oftentimes has very has a, a lot of impact from NDOT, whether that's funding, technical support, um, in any of those uh, arenas we're involved with. And so I think that for me is just really cool to see that our agency touches every Hoosier, all 6.6 .6 Hoosier, 6.6 .6 million Hoosiers mm -hmm. every single day. Um, and I think that, uh, and that's pretty cool. And to, and to know that um, I don't have the most recent statistics from 2019, but I do know in 2018, over 700, 750 billion dollars worth of freight was moved across Indiana interstates. Wow. Um, and to know that we had a hand, and it's not just Amazon. I mean, we're talking about fully, you know, cars that are rolling off the assembly line at Honda or, or Toyota here in, in Indiana, um, or they're going across from one coast to the other. Uh, it's it's pretty awesome to know that we are all, as as a collective group, have a significant hand in the economy of Indiana and the daily lives of every Hoosier. There's a lot of pride, um, you know, and I, and just kind of to that point, you know, I, the, the people that I've had an opportunity to speak with in, in this format, you know, I mean, there's just a real sense of pride to work for our agency. And I think that yeah. really, um, you know, that really comes across. Um, well, I, I was wondering if you could, you know, just general advice, to give a job seeker, maybe uh, a student that is thinking about a career pathway within our, our, our industry, maybe our agency, um, you know, what, what advice would you give them, whether they're a high school student or somebody that's um, looking for a career change? Yeah, I, you know, particularly, of course, I'm going to, I'm going to pander to people that are interested in NDOT, but I, of you know, one of the things, whether you're a high school student, as I explained earlier, it's tough to, you don't want to get pigeonholed into one thing. Mm -hmm. Or you're, or you're someone that's looking for a career change, um, is NDOT is, is large enough that you people, it's every day I see folks moving from one department to the other. It, it's not, as I said earlier, we're not just asphalt and, and concrete and building bridges and, and roads. Uh, you know, everything from real estate to finance to economics, uh, workforce development, talent management, um, we, we have diversity and inclusion. I mean, there's just a huge wide swath of what we do here we, with, within, within real estate. You were, you were literally purchasing, buying and selling real estate property, just like any other real estate agent, but you work directly for NDOT. Uh, you may be in railroads. You're working directly with the railroad companies as we're trying to build these roads and, and trying to navigate through the rail industry or utilities. There's just so many opportunities within NDOT that you could get into one department, work there for two or three years and realize, I'm not sure that this is it, mm -hmm. but, I, but my, my friend over here that does this thing within the agency, I kind of like that. I think I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to go over there and, and, and work over there. So those are some of the really cool things. And so I think when you, if you come in and end up, just remember, or if you're interested in the industry, we don't just build rows and bridges. There is so much that goes behind the scenes mm -hmm. that is a support to what we is, is what is you know kind of forward out looking at the public. And I want people to, to realize that and to understand that there are so many opportunities and it could even be in the private sector with, with some yeah. of the contractors and consultants we work with. Um, there's a lot of tremendous opportunities and a lot of room uh, for advancement within what we do. So really just keep an open mind. I understand as high school students are coming into this, kind of this end of high school days of, do I go to college? Do I go to vocational technical training? Um, 
or do I just do I just want to go straight into the workforce? Um, we have opportunities for all of those folks, mm -hmm. and and but don't you don't have to be pigeonholed in by coming into this industry. That's, that's great advice, and I think you know the pathways that exist within our agency and the fact that we have um, opportunities for growth, opportunities for tuition reimbursement. I mean, there's just right an infinite number of possibilities of where somebody could potentially go if they have a passion for it. Um, yeah, so. yeah, David, you brought up a perfect one. And this is you know, a program we just started in the last year or so, a year and a half, um, is, is the tuition reimbursement. Mm -hmm. We always had that, but it was never really utilized to the fullest, primarily because it wasn't a whole lot of money um, available. You know, we up that up to $5,000 now for employees. And so if we have somebody coming out of technical school or, or just straight out of high school that's interested and what we do and they want to kind of get you know dip their toe in the water and see if this is something they're interested in come on mm -hmm. and then and if you do want to go to school but work full-time and and then go to you know take classes at any one of the great schools we have in indiana we'll help you we'll help you pay for that um and then there's you know even different room for advancement within the agency once you get your associate's degree mm -hmm. or bachelor's degree or even a master's degree we have plenty of folks that have that bachelor's come work here will assist you financially to get your master's degree. Well, I only have one more question for you and yeah. it's kind of unrelated. Uh, I just was wondering, you know, if there's something that perhaps you're looking forward to in the next week or two, or, or maybe something that's positive that's happened recently that uh, you want to share. Yeah. So um, it, one of the things that COVID has done for me is um, re-energize me to get out of the house and to get out of the office. Uh, and so we have set aside every Wednesday now as I call it field trip Wednesday. And so mm -hmm. every Wednesday, uh, myself and anyone else from the executive staff here at central office, um, we, we go to a, a district and it's not unannounced. It's the, the, the district commissioners. They all know that we're coming and they plan it out. Uh, but yes, so yesterday we were in the Laporte district, but we were, the district's maps are so, you know, fairly large. We we're actually in South Bend, uh, Plymouth and South Bend. And so what it does is it allows us to get out of the office and to get out of our homes, uh, but it, it allows us to go see what our folks are working on out in the districts, uh, what our contractors are working on out in the districts. Mm -hmm. And then we get to meet people that we normally don't get to meet that they don't work at central office. Uh, and so every Wednesday we do that. Like I said, you know, this past Wednesday, uh, we were in the Laporte district, which meant we were in Plymouth and South Bend. So we spend the day out there looking at different projects and things. Uh, so next Wednesday we'll be in Crawfordsville. So we'll be visiting Shane Spears and his team out there in Crawfordsville. And so uh, those are the things that, not that I don't like my day-to-day -day job, but being able to get out and and see the people that are actually getting the stuff done mm -hmm. uh, and meeting and seeing new faces and, and, and meeting people is is uh, really, really cool for me right now. Very good. Well, Joe, I, I, I can't thank you enough for taking time to Absolutely. Uh, share your career journey and just give some insight on to what it is that we do. And, and uh, so thank you for uh, taking time. Thanks for the opportunity. Good luck to everyone. It. All right. Have a good one. Thanks. You too.